Hey horror fans, welcome back to another Halloween review. This time I'm doing Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Now as I started to say at the end of my Halloween 2 review was 2 was intended to be the final Michael Myers Halloween film. But Halloween was a very big name. So they thought they could do like an anthology series where every sequel is a different story taking place around Halloween. They tried that with three, and it failed. Big time. Everyone was pissed. So they thought in order to get back on their feet, they would have to do another Michael Myers film with Halloween 4. And I would say this is the start of the decline for Halloween films. I mean... Five is really bad, but, you know, as far as the two movies with Jamie Lloyd, with prob with an iconic scream queen, Danielle Harris, when she was, like, five, I think, five or six, it, yeah, it's, this is not a good movie, but it's still better than Five. I can give this one credit where five I can't. At least in this one, the characters are still somewhat characters. There's, you know, they're not just faceless people that you're waiting to die or annoying, uh, annoying people that you're waiting to get killed. And this was the first one I ever saw. It was on cable. I was. Jeez, back in the early, probably 2002. In probably fifth grade, fourth or fifth grade, maybe. It was a late night in October. My parents called us out in the living room. And they're like, hey, uh, Halloween 4 is on. And we're like, okay, what's that? My mom is, my mom said, you know, uh, the one with Michael Myers. Because I loved horror as a kid, so they must have assumed I heard about it, even though I didn't. I mean, being a dumb kid, I thought she was just saying Mike Myers, like Austin Powers, but just saying like the full name. So I thought I, I sit and watch it and quickly learn that's not what it was. I didn't even know who Mike Myers was, or what he looked like. And that first time we see him with that horrible, horrible mask, because it's no longer a Shatner mask, it's just a white face that looks cheap as balls. With Danielle Harris in a room with the lightning and just that pale face. I mean, this movie, That freaked me out first time I saw it. But yeah, supposedly Laurie Strode died in a car accident. Left her only daughter, Jamie, behind. And she was adopted by the Lloyds. And... Like, she's close with her sister, Rachel... And, you know, apparently everyone knows Michael Myers is her uncle. Because there's the whole, like, like the boogeyman's gonna get you scene at school from the first movie. But with this, it's like, her uncle's a boogeyman. And even when she picks out her costume, it's like the same clown costume as Michael in the opening of the original Halloween. You get, like... And the only reason why I say these characters are actually characters because they actually have stuff to do. There's like love triangles and drama mixed in with it. Okay, apparently Michael's been in a coma for 10 years at this hospital. They wanted to transport him back to... Um, does it say? I can't believe I forgot the name. Of the uh, asylum he he escaped from. They want to bring him back. And w one of the EMTs is actually the older lady that worked at the toy store in the first Silent Night, Deadly Night. But anyway, of course he escapes. I mean, he kills one EMT by driving his thumb through his forehead. And from there, Loomis has to chase him down. Like, 
Uh, I can't remember. He must have taken one of the EMT's uh, coveralls. Actually, no. So he's walking around for miles till he gets to this garage, which we actually... It, he has bandages that almost make it look like a Halloween movie. You know, light bandages across, the, so it's still white and expressionless. He kills one guy with like a pipe or something, this mechanic. And then he goes for a while without the mask. Of course, we see that his hand is fucked up from the fire. Apparently, fire only harms the skin on your hands. As he steals... The only white face mask at the store where Jamie is. And pretty much, you know, Jamie has like these visions of him. They're either visions or very convenient actual sights of him where he can escape. Without other people seeing him. Her, her sister's boyfriend is Sasha Jensen who was in Days of Confused. If it sounds like I'm all over the place, because I haven't seen this in a while, but as a kid, I used to watch these movies all the time. Then, like, the whole third act is basically... Okay, so the cops aren't going to do anything, so they pretty much got, like, all the most stereotypical rednecks of the whole town out looking for them. And, I mean, you... There's, like, one part where they're in the in this pickup truck with this one guy, and Michael, he somehow kills, he, like, raw, he's, like, keep fearing it uh, underneath the truck, and he's able to get up into the bed, he kills all the guys in the bed, then he reaches through the window, and he, like, rips the guy's face off. The ending is probably the worst part, though, because... Well, actually, I, I don't even remember a lot of the deaths. I remember one guy getting thrown into, like, a transformer. Like a, a power transformer. But the ending, good fucking God, man. They hit, they hit Michael, which, this is convenient. Any other time you hit someone, they're probably going to roll over the top and fly back. But with here, it's literally like they ran into a beach ball and just... Ooh. And, I mean, they are shooting him with fucking shotguns. And I think someone brought a grenade launcher because now there's an explosion. And he falls down this coal mine. But that's only after Jamie Lloyd goes up, kneels down next to him, holds his hand. Why? We don't know. So then at the end, you know, we get the same POV. Killer goes into the bathroom where her foster mother is. Stabs her with the same camera angle, the same. It, you know, her screaming gets the attention of everyone downstairs. And that's where Donald Pleasance just screams no about 20 times. And we see Jamie standing there with the bloody knife and the clown mask. So they were supposed to set up. Now, it would have been one thing if this just ended it right there. Because it sort of had the ending like the first one. Okay, Michael... He's, he's not laying on the lawn where he fell. He's out there somewhere. He could still get you. He's still on the loose. With this, it's like, okay, are they going to do something with Jamie? Is she, like, did this really happen? There's been hallucinations and visions so far. Is that another one? Or, you know, they could have just left it ambiguous at that. But they didn't. In fact... This was the first one. I think this was either three or four was the first one that Carpenter and Hill like divorced themselves from. They wanted nothing to do with them. But yeah, they fucked that up with five. And, and I mean, five is a giant turd anyway. But yeah. And these Halloween reviews are probably going to be really short because there's not much to say. Michael comes back. He, someone of his family is still alive. He's after them. A bunch of people die. Find a way to stop them. End credits. Wait till the next one. But I will say four. Halloween four is a lot like Hellraiser four. 
it's very mediocre compared to what came after it is better but it's just like right on the marginal line of being somewhat entertaining like from four on this would be the best one but that's not saying much at all yeah halloween four i used to like when i the first ones i saw was four and five and i used to like those ones a lot of course i saw them when they played on cable every october but then thank god i really got into john carpenter because his is obviously the best one and two absolute classics three is the redhead stepchild four is the last one that's I will say the last one that's worth the damn. I'll say that. But still, it's not much. But that is Halloween 4, so stay tuned for more Halloween reviews. And thank you for watching.